Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the November edition of the Cleveland Aircraft Tool Online Builder Hangout. Uh, my name is Bill Mixick. I am a family member, marketing guy, and helping out um, the Lauritsons with uh, this month's um, Online Builder Hangout, in which we are extraordinarily happy to have uh, DJ Lauritsen, um, who's head of the seat business and uh, has been a part of uh, Cleveland Aircraft Tools since the very beginning um, with Buzz and Mike. So um, with that, I think uh, we're going to just dive right in tonight. And just as a little preface for the content, uh, we're going to be talking about interiors. So uh, if you all received the, um, the newsletter last month, uh, or I'm sorry, earlier last week, um, you'll know that the topics tonight are going to be RV upholstery inside and out, um, designing your custom seats, and sidewalls and finishing touches. So quite a bit there. And then we'll just give a quick overview on the ordering process for us, and then a few installation tips and tricks. Uh, and I, I would be excited to know, um, and you guys can use the group chat um, feature in Google Plus Hangouts to let me know how far along you guys are in the process. Uh, for right now, I've got everybody muted, their microphones muted from this end, just so that we can um, get this introduction out of the way, and then we'll be um, doing a roundtable introduction as well. So if you want to use the group chat, looks like a few of you have already done that, um, and just let me know how far along you are, and then I'm going to let uh, DJ take control and um, have her do an introduction and then we'll go around and do a round table after that. So, DJ, it is, um, it is your mic. Okay, you're live. All right, hello everybody. Uh, I always wanted to go to Australia, so I'm pretty happy that you're watching from there. Maybe I'll get to come see you sometime. Um, my name is DJ and my husband Buzz and son Mike. Um, we all started this tool business back in about 1994. I actually started the seat business in 1988. So I've been doing seats longer than we've been doing the tools. Um, we were building a plane and I had a good friend that was building a plane as well and he wanted me to do his seats. He was finishing his plane a year before my husband and I told him I didn't have an upholstery machine so I declined from making his seats. Well he started reading the newspaper one ads and he found me a used Singer upholstery machine for I think it was $350 and so we went over about 30 miles away and picked up a used sewing machine for me to start doing upholstery. The first year I did seven sets of seats, the second year I did about 18 sets, and then things kind of mushroomed from there. Um, so you can tell that we've had a long history, probably over 25 years now, of making seats for specifically RV aircraft. I want to tell you a little bit about the philosophy that we have found works well in these airplanes. Van made a parachute pit in the bottom of the aircraft that allows for you to wear a seat pack parachute. Um, I feel like we ought to um, acknowledge that and keep that functional if you want it to be. And so I've designed seats that have a seat back that goes all the way to the floor of the airplane. The seat bottom then sits in front of that and forms the seat configuration. You can see in the lower area there's a lower booster cushion. That cushion can be removed and you can change the height of your seat. If you have a tall torso person and they need a little more headroom, you can take that cushion out. We can easily replace that with a thinner cushion or a thicker cushion. And you can also order a booster cushion that goes in between these two. Um, and then of course the top decorative cushion with all of the interesting stitching and cording and color selection that you make when you design your seats. Um, is provided there. The seats are put in with Velcro that attaches to the floor of the plane and the seat bottom comes apart with Velcro in the very same position. If you have a mid booster between the two it sandwiches in um, and all of the Velcro strips line up perfectly. 
So that's how you can make your seat very adjustable. Where Vans does not provide any height adjustment of that seat bottom, we provide it with the way we configure our seat back and seat bottoms and how they all stack together. So DJ, can you give us an idea of uh, the most common configuration that you see as far as you know height, you know height of the initial booster and things like that. Do people always order with a booster? Do they never order with a booster? What's kind of the, the common configuration there? The seats that I just showed you are what you would receive for the pilot and the passenger uh, for an RV6, RV7, RV9. Um, the RV4s and 8s also come with a seat bottom and a booster underneath. Um, the RV10 um, is configured where you receive the foam with your kit for the front seat. You send me the foam and then we cover that uh, seat and you can see it back in the corner here is the front is a, a mock-up of a front seat of an RV10 um, and so you would just slip that over your frame where you would uh, the foam would already be in it with our covering and it would attach to your frame in your aircraft. Um, so these would be the standard types of components that you would receive. If you wanted a mid booster, there is an extra charge for a mid booster to go in between. Um, there are other components, sidewalls, armrests, baggage cover, um, other things like that that we'll talk about a little bit later that you can also order at the same time you order your seats. Okay, um, so I think I'd like to do just a quick uh, roundtable introduction of everybody that's here tonight. It looks like we have uh, about six folks uh, joining us and a few of the names I certainly recognize from past events. Um, so let's, uh, if, if you guys see a red um, microphone icon over your avatar in the bottom of your Hangout screen, you can go ahead and click that and unmute yourselves. Um, and I think uh, I'm going to go from left to right on my screen. So Aaron. Aaron uh, Miller, how's it going? Bill, they may not all have microphones to speak into, so. Okay, well, how about this? So if any, everybody wants to give, I know John, um, John Morrissey for sure. How are you doing, sir? John's from Australia, and I know he's joining us early in the morning over there, so appreciate that. And I see the microphone not working, so appreciate that. We'll give people a little more, uh, a little more heads up on that. If they want to join in uh, towards the end, that's fine. Otherwise, let's uh, we can just use the uh, the chat window, and we'll just kind of move on here. So, DJ, I know I. Um, I kind of cut you off there. You were talking about um, fitting mm -hmm. for uh, the different models of aircraft. So the one that we didn't mention was um, the RV-12. I know there's a lot of 12 builders out there. Um, what do we know about the RV-12 as far as what comes um, what comes with that? Is in, if there's anything that um, we can do to accommodate that model? Uh, the RV-12 does come complete with upholstery, so you will receive that from Vans Aircraft already. Um, if you ever want to change your upholstery, um, change the color, change some features of the seats, that is something we can discuss with you. But at this time, what you receive will be a finished set of upholstery for your plane. Okay. I would like to show you a little bit about what's inside the seats that we make and what I have chosen to use as my standard set of seats. Um, you see the foam is two different colors on your seat bottom. The blue foam is called confer foam. That's a foam that molds to your body. It evenly distributes the pressure throughout the seat, allowing um, the seat to mold to your body and you don't have the pressure points that you do with just a standard poly foam. Now we pair that up with polyfoam. And the polyfoam that I use is a high density, high resiliency foam. It's a foam um, that's a very su uh, firm and supportive seating base. Whenever you test foam, you want to test it with the flat of your hand, pushing the foam and feeling the give 
that it gives to your hand. So if you're um, comparing a couple different foams and want to know which one is the firmest, use the whole flat of your hand, not just pinching it with your fingers. We do shape the seat and we do add some wedge um, boosters just for styling. Those really don't do much comfort-wise to the seat. They may make you feel a little more comfortable nestled in the between the wedges, but for the most part, they are cosmetic just to give styling to the seat. Um, so you do um, the Confer foam is a temperature-sensitive material. So in the summer, it's a little bit more soft and mushy. In the winter, it becomes very firm and hard, almost like a board. So if you are in the cooler climates you'll find that when you go out and sit in your plane for the first time after the temperature drops, um, you'll wonder what's happened to your seat. But if you sit in it, uh, your body heat will warm it up. And by the time you do your um, taxi out, do your run up, you'll probably have melted into that seat and warmed it up. Um, as some other companies do recommend multi-layer of confer foam in different colors. And we have found from working with different uh, clients that it's difficult to warm up those lower layers of that confer foam. We found that a really comfortable set of seats um, involves the one inch layer of the confer foam and then poly foam underneath that. That's a high density, high resiliency um, grade of foam. Hmm? Okay. Um, and then of course the layer that goes under also is that same high density, high resiliency, firm supportive seating base. You need at least an inch and, and probably more of foam under any layer of confer foam. Otherwise, you will sink through that confer foam into the poly foam. So depending upon your weight, depending upon the aircraft that you're flying, um, you'll have a different amount of foam built up under you. If you wonder if these, fo these seats will really fit you, um, we consider them to be custom seats, which means they're made for your aircraft for you specifically. Um, per your, your specifications and your design suggestions. Um, we, we do have our basic size of seat bottoms like you see here, but if you feel your tall torsoed or your short torsoed, or you may have changed your plane in one way or another and ex uh, would like to have a custom seat, we're willing to send you foam to try with extra foam to layer up and make it fit what you would uh, like it to fit. Another way to approach this is for you to use solid seating. And that is where you would stack up layers of boards or books or magazines to where you're sitting on something solid. If you put one inch behind you and in an RV four, six, or nine, put about four inches of solid seating under you, that will be approximately where you will sit if uh, you are in the foam that we standardly send you. So if you find that you need five or six inches of solid seating, we'll need to change the seat bottom configuration for your seats. And we have uh, done that a few times. So that is something we're willing to do. Um, also, you'll find that this top cushion is probably what you'll want. If you need to change your lower cushion and make it thinner or thicker, that's an easy cushion to replace uh, to send you another one to you know, cut down or layer up if we want to do it that way. So we do have a lot of uh, options available to make these the seats that fit you and fit your airplane. Can you talk about how you do the back seat of the four and eight? The back seat of the four and eight ha is simply a flat floorboard, um, which means that you are sitting flat on the floor as if it was on this tabletop and then your seat back is slightly angled back. This type of a seating configuration is not comfortable to the human body. You want to have a seat that is slightly tipped to the back and then a seat bottom that is slightly elevated in the front. Um, if I use this piece to simulate that, here it is flat and then here it is angled up. So we have de um, designed, which we actually did for our RV4 when we made that years ago, um, a seat pan drawings that will allow you to make a seat pan out of aluminum um, to give you a platform in which to elevate your seat front. If that's something you don't intend to do or don't aren't able to do, we can make a wedge-shaped piece of foam 
for this lower area in the back of an RV4 or an RV8. And that will provide that comfortable seating angle for you uh, and make your seat passenger much more comfortable when they fly with you. Good question, Mike. Thanks. Okay. Now, something that you are also probably pretty interested about is the design of the seat layout. Um, what we like to do is send you out samples in the colors that you're most interested in. And then there's an order form that does have a little diagram of what the shape of the seats look like. And you will fill that out and show us which samples are going to be placed where. I'll give you a little bit of a detail here of what that might look like. Um, the order form has each item that we offer and the individual pricing that goes with it. And then on the back side, it does have a little diagram of the layout of the seat and the seat structure so that you can sketch in some of the ideas that you would have as to where, where you'd like stitching lines, where you would like different colors of fabric placed, and um, different details on that seat, what you want to order. We send you little samples. Um, this person, this is actually an order that we filled today and are sending out tomorrow. Um, this person wanted shades of gray in light and dark gray, in fabric and in vinyl, and then they also wanted some blue, dark blue selections. And so this is a little sample kit. Uh, you can tell there's a lot to choose from. We have um, a lot of different colors available, but we only want to send you things that, that um, is of interest to you and that will coordinate with your paint scheme. So that's what you would receive as an order form and fabric swatches. And then you'll simply cut off a piece of that swatch um, and staple it to the order form um, in this area and send it back to us and then we'll have all the information we need from you to build your seats. Um, so it really works out pretty slick and it uh, is a good way for, for you to convey the ideas that you have if you would like to build into your seat. Now, DJ, I've seen um, a few examples and just even things that we've posted on the, the Google Plus page that have, um, you know, any range of, of color and um, custom embroidery and things like that. What, mm -hmm. uh, um, what's your advice on concepting things like that, and what are some things to keep in mind about size and color combination and things like that? All right. You'll see behind me. Maybe you've noticed we do have several seat backs that we've used um, throughout our time of displaying at, at air shows. Um, you'll see one with a V in the back right here. We kind of designed this for Vans Aircraft when they were asking for seats for their plane. Um, and then we do have One that where this stitching line is a little different than the one I showed you earlier. Um, you can tell these are similar structure-wise. They have similar lines, but yet are a little different. And then the center section of stitching is um, different from one to the next. You'll also be confident that whether you have an, a 9, a 7, an 8, a 4, we can accommodate each of those designs in these different um, stitching patterns and make it work out on the different shapes of seats. Uh, here's another one in an RV8 with again kind of that swoop design and a very different set of stitching lines. So those are subtle differences but they do make your seat um, individualized and a little more custom looking. The RV10 is structured in such a way that you don't have as many choices but there are things we can do to that seat as well. Um, choosing fabric, whether it's dark and light, contrasting tones. This one is a woven fabric in the middle, a vinyl fabric on the side. Um, the thickness of the seat can be a different color, where this one is vinyl on the side, fabric on the front. Um, any mixing and matching can be done, and there's no extra charge for doing that. It so. As far as wear and tear is concerned, um, what are some things that you uh, tell people to avoid at all costs? <laughs> I prefer not to have a row of cording across the front of the seat 
That's where your leg is going to lay and bend, and that that row of cording might become uncomfortable um, in your plane. So I waterfall all the front edges over the the sides of the seat, so you don't have cording there. This set of cord, you don't feel it for some reason. It just it it sinks into that confer foam, and you it becomes cosmetic, and it's not a problem. Um, comfort-wise or wear-wise. So don't hesitate to add a little color to your seat. Um, when I was looking for my interior and how to design it, years ago I walked through parking lots. I was going to college at the time and I just walked through parking lots and looked at cars. And I finally got the idea that I didn't um, uh, want a contrasting seat, that I want a darker tone, not a lighter tone. So take a think about your favorite car. Think about your favorite room in your home. Are the colors dark and and calm? Are they cool? Are they bright and energetic? Um, just kind of think about what you might want the feeling of the interior of your airplane to be, and use that as a guide as to what pleases you and the color palette that uh, you might want to use on your seat. So have you uh, stopped looking in people's cars for fun? I'm always looking for new uh, tips, tips and, and tricks that I might use on our upholstery. You'll see that if we have a close-up, let's uh, look at this seat, Mike, please. There are different ways to stiff upholstery. Um, I'll show you the contrast. Early on, we would just simply run the sewing machine down the fabric. So you could actually see, if you looked close enough here, a row of thread down in the channel that's stitched. And we're stitching through uh, foam, half inch foam. I'll show you that in a minute too. What we do now on any straight seam is what we call a channel stitching or a fold back method where we're, we're folding the fabric on top of itself, running a little seam down that folded edge and then opening the fabric back up. And so this looks like two pieces of fabric sewn together. It's actually just a little tuck. So that would just be tucking the seat. And then when we add the piping, we actually make that. We don't buy that. So that um, piping or cording could be any color and any fabric that we want to match up uh, on this particular seat. I talked to you about stitching those stitching channels into padding. Um, when we make a seat, this one happens to be a black leather, and on the back side you'll see this layer of half inch. Uh, this is a knitted back foam. You might hear it termed as scrim back foam or muslin back foam. And so all of the stitching that we do is through this foam, which makes a very uh, plumped out, very luxurious looking seat platform. Uh, we also do five-point harness, and we'll ask you that on the order form, does your plane have a five-point harness? So we have to provide an opening for that um, crotch strap to go through. And we do that as a bound buttonhole or a slit in a seam. And so that would go through all components of your seat bottoms so that your strap could come up through your seat if that's appropriate for the model of plane that you have. So those are some of the details of, of what we do inside. We also zipper the back of each cushion and what that does is allows us to stuff the, the seat in, um, stick it down, make it tight and firm and yet we can still change out that foam if we ever wanted to. Um, on the seat back it provides another purpose and that is for the lumbar support and you'll see on the side of the seat we have a bit of a curve or an arch to the thickness of the seat. And if I turn this around, unzip the seat bottom. It's actually the bottom of the back. Reach up inside behind the rest of the foam. Inside of there, there is a wedge of foam that gives you support in that lumbar area. And so that is something that's loose in there. You can move it up or down. So if you've used more cushions or less cushions than what might be um, that someone else might use, you can adjust that lumbar support up or down inside your cushion back. So that brings up a really good point. Um, when you mentioned replacing the foam, if, if anybody ever wants to do that, I, I imagine that this is sort of like um, 
someone's favorite armchair at home where you get really comfortable and you kind of get the indents and you, you know that you can't sit in anybody else's seat. So um, what's sort of the, the timeline and, and the life of the foam um, okay. and how often would it need replaced and if ever? Um, if ever, it kind of comes to mind when I think about replacing foam. Um, I hope you're flying your planes often enough that you're going to wear out the seats at some point and, and need to freshen them up or to renew the foam. Foam in general is expected to last about 10 years. Um, the life of a good quality foam should be about 10 years. Where we fly our airplanes, you know, not every day like you might sit on your sofa, I'd expect the life of the foam to be much longer than that. Um, there are very, very, very few people who I have ever produced a second set of seats for an airplane. Um, Vans is one of them, of course. He has people in and out of his planes every day, uh, regularly all the time, climbing in and out. Um, so he is he's particularly hard on seats, and I know he's had more than one set in the, some of his planes. Um, they're just, these seats just seem to last and last and last. I have people that have had the seats for 20 years, 25 years, um, and still have the seats and tell me they look as, as beautiful as the day they received them. So it is a quality product, um, which I'm very proud to say. We do use fabrics that are contract grade fabrics, meaning they're for commercial use. Um, they do have very good durability standards. They do meet a numerous fire retardancy standards, and color fastness. Um, so they are used, fabrics that are used for commercial use, not household or automotive use necessarily, but commercial use, which you might see in waiting room furniture, office furniture, um, things of that sort. So durability is, is very important when you're out in the, the sun and uh, the temperature changes that the planes undergo. Great. So I think uh, we've we've been live here for about 30 minutes. I want to stop uh, and just give folks a chance to ask any questions that they might have. Um, obviously, uh, you're, you're free to use the group chat feature, or you can ask your questions live if you'd like. So we'll just pause here for just a couple seconds and let folks do that. All right, so no questions, it looks like, which means we're doing an awesome job. <laughs> um, so next up, I know that we wanted to cover sidewalls and finishing touches. So uh, a couple things as we were brainstorming the topic that came up were uh, pockets, stick boots, seat backs, armrests, canopy covers. So um, DJ, if you want to touch on uh, a couple of those, that'd be great. All right. Stick boots, are, stick boots are something that I consider a safety feature. And, and it's something that we send with the aircraft upholstery. It is something that you'll specify which fabric you want them made out of to match your seats or to contrast or coordinate with your seats. Um, and we do send them along. They are priced in with the seats. Um, the way we make them is somewhat of a funnel shaped. And they do have zippers on the sides so that you can get it up and over uh, your grip. And then you'll also make a trim ring uh, for the bottom of the stick boot. And I think Mike has a diagram here of what a trim ring might be designed like. It'll just be a little frame or a flat um, rectangle or shape that's going to fit your, this this one is for an RV6, 7, or 9, or, I'll quit moving it now. <laughs> um, so it really is just cutting out an outer dimension, and then the inner dimension is actually where your stick is going to travel, so that it does not um, rub on that opening. The 7s and 9s do have, uh, uh, those, those are called out your plans, the 6s were not back in the day. So um, that that will be inside the boot. So you'll open up your boot, you'll put your trim ring down inside of here and then glue the edges of your boot around the bottom of that trim ring. You will have fitted that to your floor with some screws 
you'll lay this back into position, unzip your boot, and then reach down inside of there with a screwdriver and screw that plate to the floor. That conceals the trim ring, which gives you a nice look, plus it keeps your boot away from the travel of that stick as it rotates, and you won't be pinching fabric in between the stick and the, the opening. Um, so those are a safety feature, and you will get them with the, with the designs of your seats um, in the appropriate size, or if in some of the planes, like the fours and the eights, um, you would need to close up the areas around the stick in order to accommodate a stick boot like this. And in doing that, um, you would give me the dimensions of your actual opening, and we'll, again, custom make them to fit your airplane. Another thing you might choose is a baggage area cover. Before you go on, okay. you know, um, that's a fabric stick boot. Mm -hmm. Don't we normally send vinyl stick boots, or does it matter? No, we send whatever the builder requests. Um, it, they do not have to be made in vinyl. They can be made in fabric, and oftentimes we will line them if they're in fabric to prevent the wind from coming up and coming through the open um, weave of the fabric. So that's a that that should not be your deciding factor. You should decide on what what you want because of color and texture. Um, all right, the next thing is baggage area cover for the RV6, 7s, and 9s. That baggage area is open, and some people like to close that up so that you can put your headsets under there, you can take some luggage, you can um, keep some comfort items inside of there and have people not see that while the plane is um, parked on the ground. And so these are made to fit behind your seat back. Your seats would be laying on the rail, um, and then these snap with five snaps in behind your seat back, and then you'll attach it to the rear baggage wall using some type of an angle, like an 063 angle, and nut plates or um, cheap metal screws in it, and pinch that fabric to the back wall and custom fitting that into your plane um, from the aft wall to the back of the seat backs. This also can be either in fabric or in vinyl. You'll see that we have them lined. That prevents, uh, or that helps with stability and prevents them from stretching. Um, and so that is something that, it, again, it doesn't matter what fabric you choose. Any of the fabrics we send you will be appropriate for your baggage covers as well as uh, side walls, sticks, armrests, things like that. Another thing that we offer are side walls. And the side walls that we make are not totally complete, but they allow you to customize them as you install them into your airplane. This is the lower portion below the armrest of an RV, well, six, seven, or nine are pretty much this shape. They vary just a little bit. The back side, again, is that knit back half inch foam, and so the fabric is stitched to it. And then you will glue this with a trim adhesive or contact adhesive wrapping the fabric over at the top edge and mitering the corners, wrapping the front of it over, and then starting to fit that into your airplane so that if you need to trim out the foam a little bit, you can do so. If you need to trim out for a wire, if you need to cut around um, the landing gear weldments, uh, anything you might have done to customize your airplane, you can still trim your sidewalls and they will still work in your plane. Um, so this is something that takes a little bit of effort and technique on your part, um, but it is something that turns out very nicely when you get a good fit. Hey, DJ, just one mm -hmm. moment here. Um, it looks like a couple people are having trouble seeing the video, so I'm wondering if, Mike, you could just toggle uh, the video off and on and see if that helps. Okay, can you see the detail cam? Mike's asking if you can see the detail cam at this time. Yep, it looks like uh, John says the video is back. And Merlin, I'm not sure if you're... Okay, Merlin sees it. Great, thanks guys. All right. I was showing, if you missed it, um, some of the sidewalls that we make. And they are stitched and padded. Um, so you'll see those same fold-back method stitching channels, which looks like... Um, smaller pieces of fabric stitched together. 
but it's actually one large piece of fabric. On the back is the half inch knit back foam that those stitching lines are stitched through. That's what makes them look puffy. And then you wrap this perimeter fabric around your foam, mitering the corners, and making everything fit into your sidewall, working around whatever it is that you might have done um, to customize your airplane. And at that point, then, you can just put it into place. If you fit them well, it almost just goes kind of a cush into that sidewall area and fits smoothly and snugly. Um, it does take, then, just a little bit of it, bead of adhesive um, to attach those to your sidewalls. It looks like we're still having some trouble with the camera. Can, can you hear us, Bill? Bill, can you hear us? Mike says he thinks we might still have trouble with some cameras. Okay, so it looks like John. John's, John's giving us a thumbs up there, so looks like yeah. he can see it again. That's Thanks. John in Australia. Now the rest of you, come on back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So you do see a video right now. Mm -hmm. Yep, I see the video. John sees the video. Okay. All right. We, we also have quite a few questions on our Google Plus page that I hadn't noticed until just now, so I'll, we'll get through those in just a second. Did you have other five to talk about? Okay, pockets was another topic. And I personally have an opinion on pockets. And you can see what the sidewalls are made of. I don't use any plastic or cardboard or tin or aluminum or wood in my, in my seat upholstery at all. And so if you put a pocket on here, you're stitching a piece of fabric onto fabric. And when you put something in that pocket and it stresses it, it's heavy, you're pulling, um, you're pulling fabric off of the sidewall. So think about that. Um, also think about if there's an armrest on top of here, and whatever you put into a pocket, you have to be able to get back out. So you need the pocket positioned in such a way that whatever you put in will come back out of that pocket. So oftentimes we do a flat pocket like you might see on the back of your blue jeans uh, to where the, the pocket is stitched on flat but doesn't have any kind of elastic or a gathering or pleating or poofing to it. Um, that prevents you from putting things that are really bulky and heavy um, into the pocket and pulling the sidewalls off. But it does allow you to put you know, pencils, a map, a notepad, uh, something like that into that pocket. Uh, on the six, seven, nines, you might find the space forward of the spar as an appropriate place for a pocket, which we sometimes put at a 45 degree angle. And that allows you to, to put something down by your, the calf of your leg um, into that sidewall area. Um, there is some alternatives to pockets that I might mention. In the six, seven, and nines, you do have space beside your seats. And so there is, uh, well, let's say, three inches of area that would work for some type of a pouch. And I would suggest maybe um, a makeup pouch, a uh, shaving kit, um, a, a small backpack type um, pouch, something that you might find at um, any of the variety stores or um, stores like Walmart, Target, places like that, you'll find something that's very inexpensive, that has zippers on the top, that you can have different um, compartments for, that work to really hold the types of things that you might want, whether it be you know, sunglasses, um, pencils, your, put your iPhone there while you fly, um, things that you just want to hold near you and still not have end up in the baggage area of the airplane. So if you can take a pouch like that and put a couple snaps on it and uh, screw snaps to the floor of the plane, then you're not pulling on sidewalls. You're containing the items beside you where you can reach them. Um, and it's a very inexpensive way to do that. So do look for you know, some clever um, solutions to your storage problems in the airplane. Uh, let me look at my list. I think we do put... Um, um, seat heaters in. If, if customers provide us with seat heaters, we are willing to put seat heaters into your seats. And in doing that, we put them under that top half inch of foam. That's where they would be in a car seat. 
Um, we glue them into place, and then we run the wire out at the back corner of the zipper of that cushion. And you can tell us if you want them to run out of the left or the right or one of each um, so that wherever you're wiring that seat heater to is near the side of the airplane that that wire will be routed. Um, so we are very willing to do that if you want to provide us with, with uh, seat heaters for your plane. Are you ready for a specific question? Certainly. Um, I'm six foot five and building an RV8. I've read on a forum about a suggestion to trim the front of the seat cushion to avoid dislodging it while stepping in and pulling your big feet out. Do you custom do you do custom side cushions to accommodate this? Can I get a slightly thinner seat back in order to maxim maximize my leg room? Mm -hmm. All of those are to come under the category of custom. And so if you need your seat, the front of your seat shortened, um, that's simply giving us a measurement or an indication or a drawing, a sketch with some dimensions so that you can convey to us what, what it is you need, what you're trying to accomplish. Um, thinner seat back is something we have done um, from time to time, and that certainly can be done. Our seat back normally is an inch to an inch and a half thick. Um, so there's not a lot of thinning to be done, but that's not to say that we have, you know, we've done things with, with half-inch seat backs, which would be more like you see this piece of sidewall laying here. Um, that certainly can be done and needs to be done in some, some cases. So, yes, as long as you can convey to us what you, what you need, we can do it. Um, we also can send you foam to try. So if you want to get into your plane and find out how tall you are, how close you are to the panel, how close you are to the stick, um, we can certainly send you foam to try, and then you send the foam back to us uh, with notations marking what it is you'd like to have done. Be glad to work with you on that. Do you want to talk about our different heights and the way we fly in the front seat of the four? Ah, the four, of course, is one of the smaller models of Vans aircraft, um, and I fly the four now. Again, after 18 years of not being pilot in command, uh, I'm now checked out and flying, so get busy, you guys, because, you know, it just changes your whole life when you can go fly. Um, I use a, a standard seat back for the RV4 with an inch of foam behind it, which gets me a little closer to the stick and the uh, rudder pedals. I need to be able to reach the brakes and the rudder pedals. Mike is tall, and he takes out the decorative front cushion and just uses the one inch straight, flat cushion um, he finds to be about the right thickness. Um, for me, I need more height, and so I do put a, an extra booster underneath it, and um, Mike takes it back out and sits closer to the, the floor pan. Um, Mike also uses a shorter back cushion to where his hips can go all the way to the metal seat back, and the cushion would ride just in his upper back area um, to give him some comfort and yet he can get his maximum leg room in that plane by, by allowing his hips to go all the way back to the metal seat back. So you just have to find out what you need, which is also part of why we only do RV upholstery. I feel you must really understand the design um, or have the plane or have access to seeing someone sitting in that plane because how much seat uh, foam you need under you, how much behind you, whether you need a different seating angle than what the design provides. Um, all those kinds of things add up to whether the seat is comfortable for you or whether it's not. And I think you really need to understand and know the airplane to know what what is needed for that particular design's uh, seating. Okay, and then Dave asks, what do you do to pull the seat top material down to match the contour of the seat. And then in parentheses he says wedges, sides to bottom. Wedge, sides to bottom. Oh, okay, I got it. What he's asking is how do we make this shaping come into the cuts that we have in that foam? Um, I will show you again the raw foam, and you can see these wedges have some angle to them and then the flat where you see the blue contour foam and then also when it comes up 
to the front of the seat bottom. All of this shaping has to be built into the seat somehow. You'll find in your car upholstery, you'll find rods and you'll find wires and hog rings and things that pull all of this seat top down to the bottom and, and where things are anchored and secured. Since this is a cushion only, there's no wood in here, there's no stapling, there's no pulling to a frame, um, you have to provide that shaping in some other way. Years ago, we used to spray glue. We would open up the cushion, and inside, um, we would put some foam and fabric glue that was very durable, and then just actually just mold down and press down and glue fabric to foam to provide shaping. Now we're doing a method where we have a Velcro system. Um, this is a Velcro, do we have the detail cam here please? The Velcro uh, fabric is, there we go, this, this is a Velcro loop, or not Velcro brand, but a hook and loop um, system and this is the loop part and it's sold, sewn to the seam. Then the hook part has an adhesive back and it is laid into that matching crevice of the foam. And then once these um, seats are stuffed and matched up, then we actually just press it into position um, to provide the shaping into that cavity. So there's just some additional products involved in making the seats um, to allow that shaping to happen. But it, it is something, like I say, is cosmetic, but it's something that we've um, enjoy seeing and thinks, thinks that it helps make it look like a very nicely finished and comfortable seat. Do you have another hey, question? Yep. Yeah. Mark says, if you have time, can you discuss your differences between your seats and those from the competition? He names a few, but we won't. Name. All right. <laughs> um, we have been doing seats where probably one of the very oldest, if not the oldest, RV upholstery companies. Um, and early on, I realized that Confer Foam as a whole seat was inappropriate. In fact, um, Confer Foam in the different colors, pink, blue, green, um, yellow, are all, I have a Confer Foam here, are all different densities. And the company that makes this, there's only one company that makes Confer Foam. It's sold under the name Confer Foam, and anytime you hear a name like Temper Foam, Aero Foam, Gum Foam, um, Memory Foam, all of those are just trade names that, that people that are selling it have called the foam. When, when we order it from the company that, that um, markets it, it is Confer Foam. Um, and each of these are related to body weight. This product was actually developed for NASA and is now into the, the market, into the, the general population. Um, but they do recommend different colors of foam for different body weights. And so when you're seated on a seat, most of your body weight is going down to your seat bottom. And that's why we provide the contour foam in the seat bottom. And the majority of our pilots, um, the blue one is the appropriate color, which is what we use most often. We have had customers where we have offered the green or used the green, um, and that's what they um, have used in their seats for their body weight. Um, the, um, hmm. Seat backs. Oh, the seat backs, yeah. There are other companies that actually put a similar type product in a seat back. And there is no need, um, according to the, the maker of the confer foam, there's no need to have confer foam in a seat back that you don't press back far enough to utilize its um, comforting qualities. Um, there is another company that uses a multi-layer uh, confer foam system on the seat bottoms, and that is for crash survivability. So it, the theory is it's a deadening foam. It's a foam that when you hit it, you stop, you don't bounce and reverberate. And so that when you crash and you hit once, that it absorbs the forces of that crash so you don't bounce back up and hit again. 
Um, that they have proven um, keeps your spine um, from becoming as damaged. Um, so that that provides also then a hit in the downward downward motion um, for that to to activate the foam. So that is that is the philosophy that they use in their seat bottoms, which is a good one. Um, comfort wise, we found, and as well as other uh, aircraft upholstery companies that are very reputable, have found that the one inch layer over a high density, high resiliency foam is the most comfortable seat. So we'll certainly make a seat with multiple layers of contra foam, but as far as comfort goes, we recommend the one inch layer. Then uh, Van sells foam that looks just like the pieces that you have behind mm -hmm. can you. Can you talk about mm -hmm. Van's foam and what to do with that? Um, I don't personally know who's producing Van's foam. It is someone near him, so that the shipping costs um, back and forth. Um, for him to send out that foam is um, minimal. Um, they have styled their foam very close to what the styling of our seat cores are. Um, that's this part. If you would order foam only from Vans, you would get something that looks similar to this. We make our seat foam larger than your seat backs and bottoms so that you can compress that foam and crush it somewhat and put it into the casing and that allows um, that foam to be very tight and very firm and very plumped out into, into your seat case. Um, Vans foam, I'll just say, is a little different in size. We have used Vans foam from time to time. We do have to do some extra thing in the things with the seat um, covering in order to make their foam fit our seat covers. The RV8, um, I cannot use at all. Um, it does not resemble our seat structure um, at all for the RV8, um, and at least unless it has changed, you know, in recent months or years. Um, yeah. Other makers, there's some, there's some great, um, great looking seats out there. Um, some of them have a little different um, idea of how to handle the stick cutout. We use a U-shaped cutout. You can remove, add back in your seat without taking out your boot and. Uh, I've seen some seats with, with the boot attached. So that's another way of, of handling that area. Um, trying to think what other differences there are. Oh, there's um, some RB10 seats that have a lumbar pad um, in the seat back. Let me get that sample for you. They have a, a lumbar, they have a an extra piece of fabric that lays in front of the main body of the seat and then they have a little tiny lumbar, it's about an inch or so maybe, maybe less, that slips in here. Um, so I think you can change that out and, and uh, change out your lumbar. We also do that with the, the lumbar foam inside behind the rest of the foam. So it's accomplishing probably the same thing in just a little different structure, a little different way of doing it. Um, it looks a little different. Do you have a piece on that foam set? Hmm? Do you have a piece on that foam set? No. Dave has another question. Um, did you already talk about leather slash vinyl versus cloth for no. comfort and durability? Have any recommendations for someone who's planning to try and do their own sew? All right, good, good questions. Um, leather, vinyl, fabric questions. Probably we sell more fabric than anything else. I think fabric is a is a a choice that is comfortable to the body and to the touch, and we'll say it breathes a little bit. Um, vinyls have are are a great product. They they have really shown a lot of durability and versatility and lots of colors, lots of textures. Um, pricing wise we let you mix and match them as you wish uh, without any penalty of, of ordering one over the other. Um, leather is another story. Leather is probably twice as, almost twice as expensive of a seat to make a leather seat. Um, we do a good deal of leather. In fact the black one that I showed you earlier is a leather that we're currently working on. Um, Leather takes a little more care. You are in an environment where there is sun 
and moisture from perspiration, moisture from humidity or from rain, and from heat. And so once you get a natural product like leather wet and then you get it hot, it can become almost like you might think of something baking. Uh, it can become brittle, um, it can absorb the moisture and then bake it in with heat. So it takes a little extra care. Um, we have leather in our plane, so I'm certainly not talking against it. I'm just cautioning you that, that think of how you fly, where you fly. Um, it's not like your car where you have air conditioning instantly. These uh, airplanes do get, get warm on warm days, and perspiration is a concern sitting on that leather seat. Um, we also recommend you have to step in these seats, and so in order to protect your upholstery, if you would buy four hand towels matching your upholstery. So this person might want to buy gray hand towels and just lay it in the seat. Step on that hand towel and then you can pull it out from under you as you sit down. Um, you can leave it in and just sit on it. That allows you to keep your seats clean, especially with passengers. They don't want to step on your upholstery no more than you would go to um, a friend's house and stand on their sofa. You just wouldn't do it. And they don't want to step on your upholstery. If you simply lay a cloth down on the seat and say step on that towel, they will do that because they know that can be washed. Um, with four towels in your hanger, you can have two clean, uh, ready to go, two in the airplane, and when the two in the airplane need to be laundered, you can take those home and you have two ready to go. Uh, it never hurts to have an extra towel in the airplane too when you're traveling. Uh, so that's just a really inexpensive, very simple um, way to keep your upholstery looking uh, fresh and nice and also a safety feature for people climbing in and out, not knowing where to step, where to hang on to, where to throw their weight as they get in and out of your airplane. There was another part to that question, Mike. What do you have for tips for people who are doing their own? Well, I started out with being asked to make seats. And I declined because the thread in my home sewing machine um, was a strong thread for clothing, but not what I considered a strong enough thread for upholstery. You're spending a lot of money on the products involved in these seats, and you are um, putting them together with an inferior product if you use a home sewing um, thread on those seats. And so that's where I drew the line, um, saying I needed an upholstery machine to be doing my seats. If that's what you have, um, and you want to do a set of seats for yourself, that's how I started this business. So just be ready, you know, it could change your life. <laughs> Tell them a little bit about your background and, and how you know about sewing threads and that kind of stuff. I began sewing when I was seven years old, so over 50 years ago. I made a pair of pants for myself, um, something I wanted to do, and asked my mom, couldn't I really make something real and get past the doll clothes stage? Um, so I've been sewing for many years and it's just something that I always was attracted to. Um, I sewed for pay since I was 13. Um, I did go to Iowa State University and study textiles and clothing um, in, in my college, uh, early college years and then made wedding dresses, made uh, custom garments for people. I then went to um, Men's wear alterations, I did that for a number of years, and then to window treatment, um, construction, workroom, and added the seat upholstery in there as well as we built the tool business, and all the businesses kind of grew um, tandem of each other. So I do have a great uh, depth of experience in sewing and in fabrics and in materials and in construction methods. Great. So um, it's about 6.30 now, and I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, we, we had an hour scheduled for this, so I just want to wrap up with a couple of um, housekeeping items uh, to let everybody know um, if you want to get to the sample ordering uh, page and website, uh, you just go to clevelandtool.com, and on the very uh, middle top of the page, there's an interiors um, features and you can just click on that the picture of the seat and it will take you to the sample ordering form where we have um, basically just a request form where you can provide some information about the color of your aircraft uh, or planned color of your aircraft and design 
as well as um, colors of interior samples that you'd like in different uh, different types. So that's available at uh, clevelandtool.com with the interiors button at the top, uh, middle top. Um, and there's also downloadable uh, PDF order forms on that site as well. So DJ, do you have anything to close? Um, do plan your seats at about the same time that you're putting in your engine, wiring your instruments. You should be uh, have ordered your seat uh, order about the same time. It usually takes two to three months uh, lead time for seats, and that changes seasonally. After Oshkosh, we always have a glut of orders, um, and lead times are a little longer. Sometimes in the winter, lead times are a little um, shorter. There's also a place on your order form to mark down what your expected month of delivery uh, would be. And so if you want to order your seats in, um, in November and you don't really want them until April or May or sometime in the summer, you can certainly write that down. We do ask for a deposit when you order seats, but if you have a long lead time and you don't want to place your deposit at that time, um, you are very, we're very willing to work with you on that and just call you when we're ready to order the fabric the month that we are constructing your seats. So we don't need to tie up um, your um, building funds just to stay um, in, in queue for the, the seat construction. So just tell us what you need. We'll be glad to work with you. And we do have what I think is a great product and what a lot of other people have been very, very happy and pleased with. So ask, uh, ask to talk to me anytime about specific questions that you have. And we'll see if we can't meet the needs of you and, and make you real comfortable when you fly your airplane. OK, great. Thanks, everybody, for joining. And we will uh, see you next month. Have a great Thanksgiving. Good night, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.